Hey guys, uh, Brazer here. Uh, sorry about last episode. My mic broke and my computer decided to use the horrible internal mic instead. So, last episode, we finished the Tycoon Kit and we published it for people to use. Uh, this episode, we're going to make some modifications to the Tycoon Kit to make it more powerful. And, yeah. So, what I want to do is implement dependencies for buttons. Basically, uh, for example, let's let's do an example. Here we have our tycoon, and I have buy walls. And I want to make something that says upgrade walls for $250. But I only want this button to show up once you've bought walls. So, I'm going to clone the walls model first off. Oh, wrong button. And I'm going to name this walls2. And it's going to go through here. There we go. Ugh. I'm not liking that. Let's actually do this, and let's change the material of this to something a little more tasteful. Oh yeah, that's better. Um, Awesome. So we got our second walls, and we don't want this button to be here until the first button is going to be here. So what we're going to do is, first off, we're going to make this button, we're going to configure this button, we're going to make the price 250 and we're going to put an object in here called walls2. And then we're going to put in another string value, and we're going to call this Dependence. Uh, we're going to name this dependency. So, and then we're going to set this to walls one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the script for a And we're going to say when you look at a button, So for all of the buttons, what we're going to do, if the find first child dependency, because not all buttons are going to be dependent on something, um, we want to say then, uh, oh. so if it has a dependency, then v.head.can collide equals false, v.head.transparency equals false. And we've already made it so the script will not be activated unless uh, things can't collide. So then what we can do is coroutine.resume, coroutine.create function. Now, for those of you who don't, for those of you who don't know what this is, Basically, what I want to do is I want to wait for walls 2 to appear. And until then, I want this button to be disabled. But if I wait without this, then the whole loop is going to wait. And all the other buttons are going to have this event put into them, and they're all going to be broken. So this basically waits in another world, far away, not in the same world as this loop. So what we're going to do in this routine, core routine, however you want to pronounce it. I have no idea how you pronounce that. We're going to put uh, script dot parent dot, we have something called purchased objects. Uh, purchased objects, wait for child wall. Oh, wait for child v dot dependency dot value. 
and then it's going to say v dot head dot can collide equals true v dot head dot transparency equals l i'm just going to play this safe if then basically it's going to make the button disabled until what it's dependent of arrives so uh, let me just make sure everything's all right Buns dependency walls one buys walls two. Okay, let's try it out. Test play solo. Oh, something else that's cool is that since the last update, uh, I've actually made the script so that it automatically makes the teams four higher bright blue. Don't have to worry about the teams at all. It automatically makes money storage, automatically does everything. You just have to put the script in the workplace, does everything on its own. Forgot about the leaderboard though, I'm gonna have to put that back in. That's pretty bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I got the money right here, I'm gonna set my money to a thousand for testing purposes. And we have a problem. Uh, the walls are clearly here. See that? Clearly here. So let's look at why that wall is there. Perch Sandler. If V find first child dependency. So what's most likely is that I spelled it wrong. And we're gonna see that. Did I? Did I? Let's see. Let's compare them together because I am having sudden onset dyslexia today. Yes. Dependency, ha ha ha. Dependency. Wow, uh, I actually need a break to figure out how to spell this. I'm sorry, this is really... Okay, I have confirmed that this is the right spelling. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I actually learned to speak Russian before I learned to speak English. English is my second language. So I have trouble spelling some words sometimes. Sorry about that. Um... Now I'm going to want to open up something I have uh, that has our old leaderboard from episode one. And we're going to bring that over here. Okay, this is an old version of our tycoon. Let's just make sure the leaderboard's up to date. Yes, we have our beautiful leaderboard. We're going to close this up now because we don't need that. Okay. And I'm going to throw that into Tycoons. Because I want that to be there. And I'm going to disable it. And you'll see why in a second. And then I'm going to tell CoreScript to move that into lighting. So, leaderboard script equals script.parent.linked leaderboard. Leaderboard script.parent equals dot server script storage and leaderboard script dot disabled equals false so we're just gonna move this out of the move the leaderboard out of the workspace but we want everything to be packaged together Ooh. okay and then uh, I need to put an obligory brezes type kit at the top. Okay, so now let's test the dependency. Ooh, we got an error. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. This is so annoying. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we are, you guys probably already know what the problem with this is from the last episode. Okay, we're good to go. Now, we have the leaderboard, we have our dropper, which is gonna give us cash, and we're gonna cheat again, because we need to test this out. So, we have five thousand dollars over here. We have buy walls, and the upgrade walls button is gone. There is no upgrade walls. We buy, it, and now there's an upgrade walls button, which is floating, which really angers me. Why is it floating? 
Oh, okay, all the buttons are floating. That's alright then. <laughs> that's really awkward, but that's alright. It's livable. We can deal with it. Um... Yeah, it's a problem. That's definitely a problem. We're gonna have to fix that, and then you can upgrade the walls, you can upgrade the conveyor walls, by the conveyor, by the soda machine. And get some delicious soda, which also just broke. Alright, we're gonna get a new soda machine for this. Uh, later though. So, what we're gonna wanna do is... Just remove that line because clearly does not it's not there it is there I don't know what's going on I'm really not caring at this point so we have a problem because now if someone inserts the tycoon it's gonna be floating because of this awkward part so we're gonna want to make a floor for this okay Duplicate, no move. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna move that up to Tycoon. And we're gonna put that into Essentials. I'm gonna name that. And then we can resize it to meet our Tycoon needs. And there we go. Now we have a nice little tycoon floor to work with. And I'm actually gonna make it grass, because I like grass. Grass is nice. So yeah, we have our tycoon hit. Um I'm not liking the sewing machine though. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not liking that. So, now that we have our dependencies, we are ready to release this new version of the Tycoon Kit. Uh, we've added this, which does the teams and the money management by itself. So, we have the Tycoon Kit, let's update it. Save to Roblox. Okay, and now we're going to go over how to make this into a game. So, we're going to make this a pretty botched game. We're going to make this fairly quickly. So, we have our Tycoon. And with this Tycoon kit, it is as easy as... Okay, it wasn't that easy. Um, it's as easy as... Pop... Pop, pop, and then let's take those and duplicate no move, rotate group, and pop. Now we have eight tycoons, and the catch here is that you have to name all the tycoons after brick colors or else it's gonna break. So, we're going to name them all after brick colors. Uh, I'm hoping all of these are brick colors because I have no idea. Um, I think most of these are. I know the, the wine is not as capital, so have to be careful about that. And let's have black. So, let's test this one more time, and I think we'll be ready to release. Yes! So all the teams were automatically made for us, which is great. Look at that, all the teams automatically made for us. They're pretty ugly, but... Uh, now right here, we can tell by the spawn point, this is yellow. And we take that, and wow! This is our Tycoon now. If we kill ourselves, we'll spawn here. And touching this will not change your team, you have to be the owner of the tycoon. So, now we're free, we can't edit other people's tycoons. We have a fully going tycoon game here, and we're free to customize it. 
Uh, now let's talk about something else. Uh, and so now if you want to make a part like a flag that specifically changes color to be the color of the team, uh, you just do brick color dot new and then the name of the tycoon. Uh, some other cool tips and tricks. Uh, if you have a door, a VIP door, you can actually use the marketplace service to prompt someone to buy your VIP if they don't already have it. So for example, if a VIP person, this is just random, um, is VIP person, then do stuff else. You can do game dot uh, marketplace service prompt. Now prompt product purchase is for developer products. You're gonna want to use prompt purchase, and basically you give them you put person and then you put the ID of the game pass or T-shirt where you want to sell them, and basically. You can use this nifty little trick to, if someone doesn't have VIP and they touch your VIP door, it asks them to buy VIP, which is pretty cool. So we have a fully functional tycoon kit. Uh, we have a fully functional, mm, we have a semi-functional game. And next episode, we'll go over how to really make this into a playable, fun game. Thanks for watching.